Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. I'm Jordan Kanigi and today we're doing something kind of special. It's been kind of an on-demand request from a lot of you addicts out there. We're going to show you how to go through and fish these small creeks and rivers for any kind of trout, whether it be brook trout, rainbow trout, bull trout, anything you find across the United States. We're going to take you by the hand, show you some of my very favorite techniques for fishing these small rivers. So stay tuned, you guys are going to learn a ton today. So first things first, what we're going to talk about is we're going to go over your rod selection. For any kind of trout fishing, whether you're fishing for big broodstock trout or small little brook trout, I like to go with a pretty light rod. What I have here in front of me is a couple different options that they have that Okuma makes. You can really use anything, the old school ugly stick, really the, the full on setup you can buy right off the shelf from any kind of convenience store or, or tackle shop works just fine, but I like to make sure it's a nice light rod. Like these rods here, they're four to six pound rating. So what that means is they're very light, they have a very soft tip. They make it easy to cast these really light lures that we like to use for these trout and a lot of times it makes it a lot more fun to fight the fish because sometimes they're small. Even if they're big it really kind of makes it exhilarating and it makes it a lot harder to land them which as us as anglers all love. So what I have here is the Okuma Salilo. What this is is a two to six pound rating, third to three eighth ounce. Why I like that again is because of that sensitive tip. It really allows you to cast easily and let that line flow through those guides nicely so that you can get these small lures into these creeks and rivers and be accurate with your cast. What I have on this one is an Inspira 2000, or this one's a 3000, but you can go all the way down to a 2000 series reel. You don't need a ton of line on your reel for fishing this stuff, unlike fishing a lake or anything where you're gonna be casting a long distance. When we're fishing these small creeks and rivers, we're gonna be very stealthy and we're gonna be very intricate as we go through casting behind little boulders and into rapids, that being the reason you don't need a ton of line on your reel. So a 3000 or a 2000 series reel works great for that adaption. What I have on the other hand here is a little bit nicer option. This is the Guide Select. This one also is a two to six pound line rating and seven and a half feet long. Again, very, very soft tip, very light, light action rod that allows you to cast a spinner such as this, a tiny little guy, a good distance into these creeks and be accurate with your casting. This one's an RTX 30S. Again, a little bit bigger reel than you might need, but you can go to a 2000. You can stick with that 3000 or 2000 reel rating. And what I have both on these is a 10 pound braided line. It might sound a little bit heavy for some of these adaptions, but I like the 10 pound because it goes through your guides very nicely. If you go any lighter or go any heavier in your line rating or you use like a monofilament line, what it makes it, what, what happens is it makes it a lot more difficult to cast because that line builds up and it binds up on your reel and when you try to throw these light lures, it spins and it comes off the line or comes off the reel funny and it creates a lot of, of, of twists and knots in your line rather than having that braided line that's nice and thin diameter slides to the guides nice and it makes it really easy to cast again these very light lures that I like to use. So another important part when you use that braided line, that 10 pound braided line, is to add a little bit of a bumper. That braided line is pretty visible for those fish depending on what color you're using, whether it's a high vis or this brown color, this tea colored line that we have here. But what I always like to do if I'm spinner fishing, no matter what, is add that fluorocarbon bumper or monofilament bumper. And what I have here is just a little piece of eight pound or 10 pound fluorocarbon. I either use a surgeon's knot or a little blood knot to connect that. You can see on some of our tutorials that we have in our addicted site of how to tie some of these knots for you guys. But I like, whether you use a swivel or anything like that, I like to put that clear bumper of line on that so that those fish aren't being spooked or not keying in, especially if you're in a pressured area, on that braided line that they're, they're gonna see floating towards them. So that bumper all the way down to the spinner of your choice, which we'll go over here in just a second. And that's pretty key for me when I'm setting these rods up. Now that we've talked about the rod, I'm gonna go into one kind of my favorite things to use when I'm hiking and I'm fishing these little creeks. There's a lot of different options. A lot of times, whether you're in the Western United States or around the, the East Coast, some of these rivers, you're not allowed to use bait. And so being that the case, I like to use a lot of artificials, spinners that being. As anybody knows, and you've watched any of these tutorials before, you know that one of my favorite things to fish in the world is a spinner, and especially when it comes to these little trout, because they're very aggressive. These guys aren't leaving these river systems. They're resident fish. They might be migrating up and down a little bit, but they're staying within a general area and really all you need to do is get them to react. You want them to chase, they're here, they're feeding, they're living in their little feeding lanes and you're just trying to really key in on their aggressive habits of hitting anything that goes by because they're feeding constantly, unlike a salmon species or anything like that where they're just in the river mostly defending themselves if anything. So what I like to have here is kind of a good range of things that are good hardware. 
One thing I will comment on, and I haven't done with all of these yet, but you see how this spinner here, this little blue fox number three, probably one of my favorite. For some reason, trout seem to love yellow. What I like to do is kind of go through and have different colored bodies and different colored blades, going back from a, like a copper blade to a silver blade. And really that's just gonna depend on what kind of water color that you're fishing in. When I spinner fish any kind of fish, I like to have multiple styles in my pocket so that I can keep changing up and see if the color of that scheme is reacting to those fish's feeding habits anything differently. It might be different kind of bugs or different kind of prey that's going down the river that these fish are used to hitting and that's what you're gonna match by using these little spinners and keying in on that aggressive nature. So what I have here is I have a couple rooster tails, I have a couple spoons, and then I have some of the blue fox vibrac spinners. The rooster tails are kind of the alma mater, the tried and true, really works best in these kind of rivers because they're not heavy. A key with fishing a lot of these small creeks and stuff is to not have too heavy of a lure because you're gonna be fishing very shallow and very fast moving water. And really all you need to do is get the blade spinning to react to those fish. A lot of times it hits the water, the fish slams it, and you really don't even need to be reeling very quickly. But we're gonna be very versatile in how we fish this stuff. We're gonna be casting different directions. You're not gonna be doing your typical salmon or steelhead style where you cast across and swing it into the hole. A lot of times I catch the most fish casting straight up river or straight down river. And we'll go into a little bit more of how to identify good water as we go along and show you guys how to fish these little creeks like this that we have behind us. So some of my favorite lures are right here in front of you. The spoons of all different colors. The rooster tails, again, the alma mater, the tried and true, and then the blue fox spinners work really good in the size two or three. I would never go any higher unless you know there might be some steelhead or some really big trout in the local area that you're fishing, but keeping under that three to two to maybe even a size one spinner can really make it a little more effective and will allow those fish to go and key in on something that's not quite such a big and scary presentation for them. So stay tuned here, guys. We're gonna grab these rods, we're gonna grab these spinners and these spoons, and we're gonna go hike up and down this creek here and show you guys how you wanna identify good water and how you wanna fish to catch these little trout. All right, so now what we're gonna do for you guys is we're gonna kinda go walk along the river and we're gonna help you identify what good trout water is. The first thing we want to think about when we're talking about these trout in these small creeks is identifying feeding lanes. Like we talked about a minute ago, these fish aren't traveling up and down these rivers. They're living, some of these fish might stay within the same half mile of the river their entire life. They'll go from pool to pool, they'll chase each other around and move around, but mainly their entire life base is off of feeding lanes. So what we want to find, and especially in a small creek like this, it's midsummer, the water is very low, these fish are going to be in the most reclusive, the best hiding spots, and the best feeding lanes possible. Usually when you're going to find the biggest fish is when you find those perfect feeding lanes where they have to sit and the food just gets funneled right to them. They sit behind one boulder all day, they move out from behind that boulder, behind that ledge, grab those those flies or those bugs or whatever it might be that they're eating and then they move back and that's all they do all day is just move around and chomp 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 all they do is grab stuff spit it out eat it spit it out eat it so what we want to do when we're looking at that is we want to find those good pools those deep runs that fast water where those fish can hide well but still have that good access to food as it comes floating down the river to them so what i have behind us we're going to go over a couple different kinds of water as we go through here and then we're going to show you guys how to effectively fish it but what we have behind us here is this great little pool. This river comes down, it's making all these bends, going through these nice boulder gardens and these fast bits of water, and then it's dumping off into these pools like this. This is what I would look for first off when I'm coming up to the river, is a pool such as this, about waist to head height, nice moving water with a nice foam line, what those fish can feed off of, and again, a nice bit of cover, big boulders they can hide underneath and beside to where they can just move out from behind that, grab their, the bugs or their prey, whatever they're eating, or their spinner, and move back down. So what I'm gonna show you here first is how to approach these holes. First things first, especially when the water's nice and clear like this, you really wanna go slow and be stealthy. Don't wear very vibrant clothes, don't wear a nice yellow construction hat or a bright pink shirt. You wanna kinda of have neutral colors that match the surroundings around you so that you're not spooking these fish before you even get up to the hole. What I like to do is always, when I'm fishing these runs, is start from the tail out and work my way up. That's kind of a difference in the difference between the salmon and steelhead fishing or any kind of other migratory fish fishing where you start at the head of the hole and work your way down. The fish, these trout obviously have giant eyeballs because they use their entire or their entire lifespan is driven off of their sight. So what I always like to do is again start from behind the fish. They're looking forward trying to get the bugs or whatever it is that's coming down river. So I'll start down below them and cast above and I'll work my way from the bottom of the run slowly to the top. 
So what I'm gonna do here is before I even got into this pool, I'm gonna grab my spinner and I'm, see I'm about 15, 20 feet back from the river here. I'm staying back behind the fish's eyesight and I'm gonna make my first cast up into the hole. What you can do with these spinners and what's gonna make you most effective or with any kind of bait or gear is be very versatile and be very creative with the water that you're fishing. 90% of the trout I catch are on a straight up river and down river presentation, which is meaning I'm not making that perfect cast across and swinging it around like we stress in a lot of our other videos, but I'm casting at different angles and different parts of the hole from one spot so that I can stay out of the eyesight of those fish. So like from right here, I'm gonna take my first cast. You can see these nice boulders out here in front of us and I'm gonna cast all the way across the river covering this bit of the tail out before I start even working my way to the top of the hole. And with these trout, and you'll see, especially in these clear creeks where there is a lot of visibility, it's not as important to get that lure super deep into the run. If the water's murky or there's not a lot of visibility in that water, you're gonna wanna get it deeper just to get in front of those fish. But really the key is, is just, just hit your lanes, hit those little hiding spots, and just get that blade moving. It doesn't have to get super deep. You don't have to let it sink a long ways. You can start that spinner as soon as it hits the water, engage that blade and fish it down into the water column and get it in front of those fish. So that was my first cast behind that little rock. Now my next cast, I'm gonna move up about another 15 feet and get in between these two little rocks, catching that last little bit of this tail out. So again, right up there. And you can see how nice and smooth that 10 pound test cast out of that rod, going right across those rocks nice and slow, just enough to get that blade spinning and I'm gonna bring it in. And now that I've covered those couple spots, I'm gonna start moving my way up into the hole here. And again, let it be said, there's nothing that ever says or nobody's ever said you have to get close to the river to fish it. If there's a lot of brush and there's a lot of, a lot of overhanging stuff that allows you that, to not stand back, of course, go ahead and get in that river, but use that downriver to upriver presentation to fish these holes, that way you're not gonna be spooking those trout. So I'm gonna move up about another 10 feet here and I'm gonna continue my cast up into the top of this pool. And now the beauty of these trout, one of my favorite parts of fishing these little spring creeks is that these fish are usually very aggressive. So the key is to keep moving and to keep movement up and down the river system. Don't just stay in one hole and keep casting because if you didn't get hit on those first couple casts, either change your lure, change your presentation, and then get on down the river or the stream and find different pockets and holes to fish. So I'm gonna make about three more casts, move up and fish the white water right at the base of these rapids, and then we're gonna move down river and show you guys a couple different kinds of runs that you can fish to find these trout. Okay. So now that we've covered this pool, we're gonna start walking down river and slowly working our way into some of this faster water, showing you guys a couple different styles of runs to fish in. So as you see, we're creeping our way down to another little faster pool here. This is gonna be, we're gonna kind of go at this run a little bit differently than we did the other one because we're starting down from the top. As you can see, it's got a lot more broken water, a lot more bubbly water and swirly stuff so that we really don't have to be as stealthy. These fish can't see through that water quite as well as they can a nice stale pool like we saw right up here. So what we're gonna do is kind of take this at a different angle, which I'm gonna show you guys some different angles of casting, the way we're gonna fish this. We're gonna really utilize an underhanded cast on this one, because we're not gonna really be needing to cast very far. So I'm gonna creep down, I'm gonna stay about 15 feet off of this bank, and I'm gonna work this run from the top of it, swinging that spinner across, at that sideways angle, letting those fish get a look at it for the longest amount of time possible. So a lot of times these fish will be sitting right under the white water at the head of the hole. Again, because it's a perfect feeding lane for those bugs or whatever they're eating to come down to them. So I'm gonna always start close, just like we did in this last pool, and I'm gonna work my way out farther into the tail out of that hole, standing again right at the same spot that I started. Nice little underhand cast. And as soon as that hits that current, I'm just gonna let it do its thing. As long as I know that spinner is spinning and it's giving a good action, I'm gonna let it spin and work its way all the way into the bank and let it cover that amount of water that I have that distance of casting for. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, a little bit further. Get that tight, get that blade going, and I'm just gonna let it work straight underneath that current, swinging all the way into the bank, right across that structure, and then I'm gonna bring it in. And then once again, I'm gonna go just a little bit further. Now I'm gonna switch to my overhand cast, just like so. Fish this little back eddy. And again, like I mentioned earlier, you wanna be as creative as possible when you're fishing this. That's probably the most fun part 
of fishing these little creeks and stuff like this for these trout is you can catch them behind every little nook and cranny. There's no rhyme or reason why these fish are gonna be in one certain spot other than, again, those feeding lanes. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna cast all the way into that tail out. You can see those last couple boulders covering that structure. And then I'm gonna work down river once again. Okay, so now that we've effectively covered this hole again, we're gonna keep on our motto and that's to keep movement. So we're gonna go down, fish these next little pools. And as you can see, as we look down river here, we have these little staircase effects with tons of structure. So the key is, is gonna be covering it all going through and picking apart this whole boulder field and going through this entire run, casting at every little angle we can. So stay tuned, you guys. We're gonna start working our way down river here. So now we're coming up to about our third different kind of water. Really, it's about three different kinds of water that you're gonna look for these trout in. The slow pools, the fast, boily stuff, and then these shallow riffles. These shallow riffles are usually where I tend to find some of the biggest trout. They're hiding behind these rocks. There's a lot of food coming towards them because it's not getting the surface broken up of the water so much. So they sit in their little feeding lanes, they move out and they grab their prey. And so what we're gonna do here, oh, I just saw one roll. What we're gonna do here is fish this from a, a good distance back because there's not as much glare, there's not a lot of broken surface on this water. I'm gonna stay just about as far back as I humanly can, just allows me to cast, again, stressing that 10 pound braid. That 10 pound braid makes it so easy to cast a good distance and be accurate. So I'm starting all the way back in the tail out here. I'm gonna be about 15, 20 feet off of this bank and I'm gonna cast out into the stream, working that spinner again, just getting that blade moving. That's all that's the most important here is making sure that you get your blade. Oh, oh, okay, there's one there. There's one, oh, typical. Uh, well, I'm gonna sneak over here again because that fish just came out and tried to bite. I'm gonna try to be as stealthy as possible and get myself out of these trees here without spooking this little guy. Okay, I'm gonna move back out. We're gonna try this again. There's a biter there. He didn't like it. I'm gonna cast back up in here. Going nice and slow. Get that blade moving. Okay, let's try it again. I was a little far up river from that one that time. Darn it, he's on to us. So you guys saw that. You saw that effectiveness of staying back. I might have even spooked him there when I went to go get my spinner again. But staying back, being stealthy, and getting that spinner into that pocket, into those little, those little spots that those fish are gonna hide in is really key. Again, stressing not getting too close to the water especially in these clear, clear water creeks like you're gonna find in most of the parts of the United States. Okay, now that we've messed this little guy up, we're gonna start working our way down. Making a couple more casts a little bit lower in the pool. Now we'll go back up to this guy here, see if we can fool him one last time. And changing angles on these fish can be very important too. You saw how my first couple of cats there were more so up and into the hole or maybe straight across. Now I'm gonna cast up and into the hole and bring it straight down into that fish's face, which might turn on a little bit more of an aggressive bite. Oh, there he was, darn it, ran out of room. All right guys, before we wrap it up today, I wanna go ahead and call out on you guys. Drop a comment below with what your favorite style of fishing is to fish these small creeks and streams. I know one of my favorite is just walking around, chucking these little spinners, but if there's something out there that you guys think works way better, do share it below. We wanna keep this conversation going. And we want everybody to get out here and get to enjoy this beautiful stuff that we have anywhere in the country, which are these awesome little trout. So drop a link below, you guys. Be sure to comment, be sure to like and share. And if you guys wanna see any more of these videos, be sure to comment below with what you wanna see, what kind of fishing or what kind of trout you wanna see us go and catch. Me and Sean are gonna keep hiking down the river here, trying to catch a few more of these little guys. So thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. We really appreciate all your support and we really hope that these videos help you guys get out there and enjoy this kind of fishing because we know we love it and we know you will too. So be sure to like, be sure to share, be sure to comment and you guys stay fishy. We'll see you out there. Thank you.